Alright, welcome to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Today I'm going to remake the first Unreal Engine 4 tutorial I ever created three years ago. It's actually one of my most popular videos, believe it or not, and it's called Open Closed Door with Triggers and Matinee. However, now I'm going to create it with one trigger and using Cinematics Sequencer. So it's going to be basically the same, but still it's using the newest technology, so it's more up to date and I'm not going to sit and talk for 16 minutes, so yeah. Uh, and I've, I have, let's see, I've created this little corridor and we will place a door in the middle here and we will, when the player moves toward it, it will open and it will close when the player moves out of it uh, or away from it. And I'm going to use some sound sound effects, and I've created it with these walls. And if you want to use those assets, then you can go to my own store on GameDevCentral.io, and you can see that the sound effects are free. The walls are not. Use what you want. I will put a link down below. Okay, and this is a third-person blueprint template. Yes. So uh, we will simply start by finding something that can be a door so I'll just take this wall for example which also is a part of that asset package by the way and I'll just make sure it's pretty decent right here then we will go out again and we will I will right click and create a new folder. I will call it cinematics. And inside of the cinematics folder, we will create, we will go up here to cinematics and take add new level sequence. And here, click the cinematics folder and we can call this open door sequa for sequence. Like that. Now just make this a little bit bigger and make this a little bit bigger. So now select your door asset and click add in the sequencer. Actor to sequencer, add wall 27. Now uh, I like its position right now. I want it to start there. So here you have the transform. You can click here if you want to see location, rotation and scale. We don't need that. So I'm just going to have the door place that one and place a new key like that. Then move this timeline bar or whatever it's called to where the door will be at its most opened state. So I'll take that on 25. Then I will drag the door up and I'll have it like, yeah here so we can see it a little bit see it a little bit then go back here and add a new key now you can move this and you will see that it works you can set it here and then just click space to play we can take reverse to see that it closes itself again okay so you could now create another one another key here and then another key here so the, the entire animation opens the door and closes the door again but I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna have these two and I'm gonna set the end of the animation to 50 like that so we will when the player overlaps the collision box it will open and then when the player exits the collision box it will simply reverse like that so now select the door and select your cinematics symbol in here then go to blueprints open level blueprints i'm going to attach that here then right click and simply Go down here and take create references to two selected actors. If you can't see that, just write ref. Err, <laughs> yes, refer. And then you'll see it here. 
like that. Now go out again and we will create a trigger box. So here on volumes, you can just write trig box trigger. So drag that in like so. And I'm going to scale it so it fills the entire breadth width of the corridor. And I'm going to make it higher like that. And I'm going to drag it out like so. Hello, here we are. OK, lift it up a little bit like so. OK, so with the trigger box selected, go back to level blueprints, right click and add event for trigger box eight collision add on actor begin overlap. And then right click again and take yet again, add event for trigger box eight and then collision add on actor end overlap. Um, well, we might not actually need that wall reference, but we will need this open door sequence reference. So drag that out and simply write play. And here you will choose play sequence player. So I'm just going to put them up like so underneath this. Then connect the trigger box to play. I'm actually going to just delete that. Now we can copy these two control C control V and then drag this out and right reverse. Now choose play reverse sequence player, not the other one. Yeah, and just delete that. Like so, and then just connect and compile and save. Now, let's see if it works. So we go here, boom, it opens, we go out and it closes exactly the way it wanted to. So that's that's awesome. That's really awesome. Actually, I would like to have it so open so, you know, early that I'm not gonna Or does it work? No, I'm crashing into it. So I want to make the trigger box volume a little larger make it activate a little earlier let's see I'm running and here we go yes now if you find that it's kinda you know glitching then it might be that you need to go down here to the sequencer and right click on this line transform line and go to properties and have use when finished keep state this has been a little bit you know off and on for me sometimes I have to do it other times I don't have to do it I don't know why but it usually works when I take keep state because when I go up here then then it will keep that state until I remove myself from the trigger box. Otherwise it might glitch and pop back to start without actually reversing the play. So that's it. We're finished. But for the fun of it, I'm going to create a light and I'm going to put on some sounds. So if you want to join me further, then let's continue. So let's start by just saving the project and saving everything save the sequencer now inside the sequencer we can now add sound effects so i'm gonna go and i'm gonna use dungeon door open close it sounds like that so i'm gonna go to add in the sequencer audio track so click here and then find the effects you want open dungeon door open close 
And now let's see, it should be that easy, you know. And there it opens. Now, if we think the sound came a little early, we can simply just, first we can make it a little bit shorter and then just move it like that. So it starts a little bit later. That's better. Maybe even, even later. Because it's the sound of it hitting kind of the, yeah. Like that. So if we play, that's cool. Now, it doesn't, the sound doesn't really work in the reverse uh, when it plays reversely. So I'm gonna add the closing sound a little bit differently. And I'm gonna do that the old fashioned way. So we're gonna go back into our level blueprints and then we will go to the play reverse. And here I will simply write play sound at location. And then we will have the dungeon door open close to Compile, save, and then it should, you know, play when the door reverses. So I open. Yeah. But that's way too early. So the way we can fix that is simply add a delay. Let's say the delay delays for 0 0.4 seconds. say 0 0.8 perhaps we'll see or should we just take an entire second it's really slow but this is because I've put the trigger box so far far away you know that's better that's actually pretty good Yeah, that works. I like that a lot. So now, just for the fun of it, you know, I'm gonna add some lights. So it, let's say it lights up red when it's closed and green when it's active. Yeah, I'm just gonna right click and then take place actor point light what are you talking about yes doesn't matter I'm gonna make it red and then I will control C control V to create another one no I'm not gonna do that I wanna do that no Okay, is it too close to something? Okay, I'll, I'll just build lighting. Severe performance loss? Oh my goodness. Is it that bad? <laughs> it's really that bad? What if we remove that one? That's better. I don't know why that happened. Didn't happen when I tried, tried it er earlier. Okay, so I'm gonna have it like that. Now maybe, control C, control V. Okay, I can just make that static. And I'm gonna make it green but we will with the green selected we will go down and we will hide the visible so only the red is visible as of now so select both of them then go back into level blueprints 
and drag out this one from play and say toggle remove context sensitive and we want toggle visibility now since you have selected both of the lights you can right click and say create references to two selected actors and then just connect both of them to targets now this looks like a mess I know I'm sorry like this and you know we can do so when we now cross it they will shift who's on and off and we will have to do the same when we leave the trigger box so select both of all of these control C control V and then connect them here as well now let's see Yay! Now, why did the audio disappear? It actually disappeared. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I maybe I killed it. Maybe I oh I might have hit it up here and then deleted it. Okay, I'll just put it back. Put it back. It's easy. Now let's try again. Oh, I didn't mean for it to build. I tried to play. Oh, well. Let's see. Okay, so something is happening. Yeah, what's happening is that after building, the green one started being active. No. God damn it. There's some strange things going on right now. <laughs> so it turns out to be a really long tutorial after all. Oh well. You should be able to make that work you know it worked until I did something weird and I put the audio there and whatever but this works so uh, hopefully it was helpful and if you have any questions then just ask have a great day